My first preliminary winter forecast for 2023 to 2024 has arrived and in this video I'm going to break down everything we know about the upcoming winter season, the mechanics playing into it and how it will differ significantly to recent winters. But just before we get into the video here are a couple things to keep in mind. Obviously since we are still very far out things can and will change. The purpose of this video will be to give you a rough idea of what to expect and not the details. So instead I'll be breaking down some large-scale weather patterns and how they typically affect the winter weather pattern and what that's going to mean for us for this winter. With all that in mind let's start off with the most important aspect of the forecast, the big players behind it all. For the last few years our weather has been under the influence of La Nina which is a cold phase of the waters over the equatorial Pacific. But like I've mentioned in some of my previous long-range outlooks, that has since changed and we have now entered an El Niño, which is the warm phase. Unfortunately, the warm phase of these waters tends to cause some major problems. For example, it has likely contributed to record heat across the world, including even record warm ocean temperatures as well. This unprecedented and abnormal heat has smashed records and it will continue to do so over the summer. And as if that wasn't bad enough, El Niño is still strengthening. By the time we reach the winter, scientists are expecting this to be a strong El Niño, which will continue to make the impacts even heavier. And speaking of the effects that El Niño has on our weather, take a look at this map I created for North America. During an El Niño, the polar jet stream tends to ride much further north than usual, allowing for warmer than normal temperatures to prevail from Alaska down through Canada and into the northern US. At the same time, the subtropical jet stream becomes persistent and amplified, bringing frequent storms to the southern US and northern Mexico. The constant precipitation and lower pressures will also bring temperatures lower than normal for the south central and southeast US. Precipitation will be more sporadic over the northern US, especially over the Ohio Valley and Midwest. But El Niño isn't the only thing affecting our weather. Another teleconnection we look at is the Pacific North American Oscillation or the PNA. This also has two phases. The positive phase is typically associated with El Niño and it causes ridging over the western US and Canada, therefore bringing warmer weather. On the contrary, the east becomes colder. But during the negative PNA, the cooler weather is centered over the west while it's warmer over the east. For the upcoming winter, it's looking that we will see a positive PNA along with a strong El Niño. When you put these things together, you get a lot of warmth. And that's exactly what we see on my first temperature forecast for December through February. Pretty much anywhere from the west coast and northern United States, as well as much of Canada and Alaska, will experience warmer than normal weather. These warmer than normal temperatures will be even more persistent in this next orange shade from the Great Lakes region westward. The strongest signal for above normal temperatures looks most probable in the dark red across the northwest northern plains and much of western and south central Canada. While temperatures are interesting and important to review, most people really want to know about the precipitation and snowfall. But before I show you my precipitation outlook, there's something else I want to talk about nor'easters. These large and powerful coastal storms ride up the east coast during the winter and autumn seasons, but they can be particularly intense and massive during an El Niño, especially during a strong phase. Take for example the March 1993 superstorm, which was a phenomenally powerful storm, which was even dubbed the storm of the century due to its widespread extreme snow, while even bringing a severe weather outbreak to Florida. And not surprisingly, this occurred during a strong El Niño. Here's another example. In 2016, a powerful winter storm named Jonas brought heavy snow and damaging ice to the south while bringing a blizzard to the mid-Atlantic. This brought record-breaking snow to some areas as well. Looking back at analogs, 2016 featured one of the strongest El Niños on record, not to mention that this monster storm occurred during the hottest year on record thus far. So with this strong El Niño likely coming for this winter, we also need to look out for the potential of strong nor'easters. I'll talk more about that right after my preliminary precipitation forecast. 
So this map is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. So generally speaking, British Columbia, the southern United States, and the east coast looks wetter than normal this winter. The darker the green shade is, the higher the likelihood for above average precipitation. The greatest focus for above normal precipitation looks most probable over Florida. Areas expecting dry weather will be over a large portion of Canada and the northern U.S. These areas will not only be warmer than normal, but they will also be lacking with precipitation. Next up, it's time to look at my snowfall chance map compared to average. Because this is a preliminary outlook, the detail on this map will not be too high. Areas in the tan shade will have less chances for snow, therefore leading to below normal snowfall amounts. States in the blue will actually have higher snowfall chances, with some areas receiving more snow than usual. For example, like California, it may be warmer than normal, precipitation will be more frequent, therefore raising snowfall chances for the mountains. Next up, my severe weather forecast. Severe weather will affect similar areas as most winters, but it will be a bit different this year. Places like California will have an elevated risk for severe storms due to the frequent storm systems coming in along the subtropical jet stream. Just like last winter, if some of these storms encounter the right conditions when they come ashore, at least isolated severe weather may occur. The greatest risk area is obviously the southern plains into the southeast. This is where the majority of winter storms will likely move through, so most of the severe weather will occur within these red shades. The greatest risk of severe weather looks most probable along the Gulf Coast and especially Florida. Now that we have taken a look at all of my individual outlooks, let's compile it all into my first preliminary overall winter weather forecast. For the northwest, I'm expecting much warmer and drier weather. This will likely impact ski resorts across the region. For the northern plains, the jet stream will be riding very far north, leading to fewer cold air outbreaks. Obviously, it will be cold at times, but it won't be anything like what we saw in last December. Along with less cold weather, drier than normal conditions are expected. For the Great Lakes region, especially around Michigan, dry weather is favored. In the southwest, especially over California, very wet weather is anticipated. Further east in the red shade, soggy weather is likely during the winter. Winter storms may also cause severe weather events along the Gulf Coast and into Florida. The yellow shade from Colorado into Ohio is a flip-flop zone. This is where weather will be indecisive, with periods of warmer and dry weather and other periods being colder and maybe some snowstorms. The blue shade extending from New Mexico to North Carolina is where I'm expecting above average precipitation, below normal temperatures, and therefore enhanced snowfall potential. For the northeast, plenty of snow is expected. Along the coast, several nor'easters may occur throughout the winter, with snow possible in the light blue shade along the Appalachian Mountains. And that will conclude my preliminary winter forecast. We will be doing another installment of these winter weather forecasts by late August with further updates coming out throughout the fall. If you did enjoy this analysis video and you want to see more forecasts and weather information, make sure to subscribe. You can also support this video by leaving a like and even sharing the video with someone who may find it useful. Thank you all for watching and see you on the next one.